Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. In a moment, we'll begin tonight's adventure of George Valentine. I'm sure that as a motorist, you know how important chassis lubrication is to the life of your car. That's why I know you'll be interested in the advantages you get from guaranteed car saver lube service. It's no hit or miss job with car savers. They use charts specifically designed for your car according to the manufacturer's specifications. No wonder they stand behind every grease job and guarantee them against squeaks for 1,000 miles. Stop in soon for complete car saver lubrication service at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. And now, tonight's story, War Maneuver, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. P-A-L-C-H-E-K, Palchek. Yeah, I have the name, Mrs. He's Fenton, the but... nicest, sweetest man, and I have him in jail, Mr. Valentine. That's all I know. Yeah, well, I'm having Miss Brooks check it on the other phone, so just calm down, Miss Fenton. He's the nicest border I have, and he wouldn't do anything wrong if his life depended on it. He's gentle, and he never takes a drink. Yeah, yeah, uh, hold on a minute, will you, Mrs. Fenton? What did you find out, Brooks? They have a Simon Palchek in jail, all right. Uh-huh. What's he charged with? Killing a young woman. He ran her down with his car. He was very drunk. What? Uh, Mrs. Fenton. Uh, yes, yes. What is it, Mr. Valentine? I'll get down there and look into it. I'll get back to you later. Yeah, uh, Simon Palchek, age 48. Still in the cell, sleeping it off. Open and shut case, huh, Sergeant? As far as I can tell. It smelled like a brewery when it was brought in. The car is pretty badly smashed and the poor girl was hit. Oh, where did the accident take place? In a pretty deserted section of town, Miss Brooks. Near the toy factory where this Palchek works. Thornton Toys. Boys picked him up just sitting there slumped over the wheel. I see. Was there anything wrong, Mr. Bamford? Well, just a slight discrepancy about a man's character. Probably just shows that gentle, sweet ladies like Mrs. Fenton are bad judges of character. I don't get it. But on the other hand, maybe this is worth dragging Johnson away from supper. Yeah, it might be worthwhile. I, I, I don't know anything, Lieutenant Johnson. And my head hurts. Valentine, I don't know how you managed to get in the middle of things like this. Well, the all... doctor's report is clear and to the point. This man hasn't been drinking. He was slugged. I don't remember either. Slugged and remember. then liquor was poured over. So that he would be thrown in jail and no questions asked. Questions would be asked in due time, Miss Brooks. Enough so that we'd find out everything we have to know. But there's no reason why we shouldn't take a look at Palchek's car, is there? Oh, come on. No question now, is there? No. Dents in the front of that car were put there by someone. Probably smashed in with a heavy monkey wrench. They weren't the result of hitting that poor girl at all. No. She was probably killed by someone first and thrown under Palchek's car. Pretty clumsy frame-up by somebody who was desperate and needed time for a getaway. Yeah. Well, I guess my job is over, such as it was. What's that? Well, Mr. Palchek can go back to Mrs. Fenton. She'll make him some nice chicken soup, and I can... You're staying here. You don't come in and get things started and then waltz out. Girl's handbag was nowhere around. No means of identification. Well, what do you need me for? There were some laundry marks on her clothes. We're checking those. You're sticking around. Laura Gillespie, no. No, I never heard of her, Lieutenant. And you don't remember seeing her before? No, no. I came out of the plant that, that Thornton's toys, and I was going to start driving my car, and I, I guess somebody hit me that must have been hiding in the back of the car. 
And that's all I remember. No, and you probably just happen to be the handiest guy around, Mr. Pelcher. I'm pretty lucky to get out of it. They might have killed you. Oh, they, they could, couldn't they? Uh, Mrs. Fenton is still pacing outside like a nervous mother hen lieutenant. Oh, so nice uh... lady. She very nice. Yes, I guess you can go, Pelcher. We'll be around to ask some more questions another time. Anything I can do, Lieutenant, anything. Let the gentleman out, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Well, might as well see what we can find out at the address you have for Laura Gillespie. Laura, dead. Dead. I can't get it through my head. Why? Why? I'm afraid that's something we don't know yet, Mr. Gillespie. We're trying to find out. I... I... Uh... <laughs> well, perhaps you can give us some idea as to why your wife was down on Manson Street, Mr. Gillespie. I don't know. I don't know. It's a little out of the way. Was, uh, was Mrs. Gillespie out shopping this afternoon or visiting some friends? She was out working. Working. Because I was never a good enough man to provide her with the things she deserved. Writer. Where did I ever get the idea that I could ever write anything in my life? All I could do was to write this trash, drink more than I should. So, I don't know what I can do to help you, Lieutenant. What difference does it make anyway? It won't bring Laura back. We understand how you feel, Mr. Gillespie, but believe me, these questions are necessary. Where did Mrs. Gillespie work? Sorry. Lasovsky Import and Export Company. They're down on Fifth Street. Laura is... Was very smart. Got to be a lieutenant in the waves during the war. She was Mr. Lasovsky's good right arm. Anything about the job that might have led to uh, to what happened? No, no, Mr. Valentine. As far as I know, it was a pretty humdrum, orderly job. With maybe just a little wolf and Mr. Lasovsky. Go on. You say Laura's handbag was gone. Then this must have been a robbery. Yeah, that's the most logical explanation, isn't it? Isn't it, miss? Uh, yes, I, I suppose so. Uh, about this afternoon, I suppose you were here. Oh, that's right, an alibi. I should account for my whereabouts. That's another one of the things you must ask me. Oh, I have a beaut of an alibi. I was in my usual hangout, Mike's Bar and Grill, all afternoon. While I should have been trying to work. At least a dozen people saw me. Now, please, please leave me alone. If you work with a girl for over two years, Mr. Lasovsky, you should get to know her pretty well. Oh, I did, I did. She was a lovely lady. Smart, brilliant. Terrible tragedy. Did Mrs. Gillespie have the afternoon off? Oh, it wasn't anything as formal as that. In this office, she came and went without having to account to anyone. As a matter of fact, Mr. Lasovsky, we were curious as to whether you might know of any enemies Mrs. Gillespie might have had. Enemies? No... Well, that was kind of a reluctant no. Is it supposed to mean anything? No, no. I'm sure you understand that if you have anything that might possibly help us, you well, should... The husband, Mr. Gillespie, is a very jealous man and a very weak one. Of course, I don't mean to imply anything. I see, I see. Thank you very much. I presume you were here all afternoon, Mr. Lasovsky. Oh, yes, yes. We had three customers. Very fine people. Alibi number two. This export and import business, Mr. Lasovsky, yes. is it of a general nature? Oh, yes, mostly to Europe, uh, mostly Eastern Europe. Of course, the business isn't as good as it was once. That's tough. We import some fine lace, bohemian glass. Uh, we send them some machinery, even toys. Toys? Yes. You know the Thornton toy firm down on Manson? They're, they're very fine clients of ours. Uh, what's the matter? Did I say something? Thornton Toys for good girls and boys. That's been the slogan of our firm since my grandfather started it in 1884. That's very interesting, Mr. Thornton, but we were very interested in whether Mrs. Gillespie came down to see you this afternoon here at your plant. Well, no, as a matter of fact, she didn't. Oh, what's the matter? Why are you all looking at me that way? Well, if she did come down here, she'd see you, wouldn't she, Mr. Thornton? Yes, of course. She'd place the order with me. And she didn't see you today? I'm not in the habit of lying, Miss Brooke. Oh, it's just that we felt we established a good reason for Mrs. Gillespie to be down here. 
We thought you might give us some further help in tracking down the man who killed her. I see. The Lasovsky firm buys only a moderate amount of toys. Well, here, dolls like this. Some dolls that sing their own lullabies. Some handmade toy soldiers. Mr. Polchek has been making toy soldiers for us for almost 20 years. Oh, yes, and some uh, cowboy dolls. So your relationship with Mrs. Gillespie was rather casual and purely business. Exactly. Oh, but wait, wait. I couldn't have seen Mrs. Gillespie at all this afternoon, even if she did come. What do you mean? It slipped my mind. I was uptown in our designer's office most of the afternoon, going through the new line of stuffed animals. Miss Perkins, that's the designer, can back me up. No doubt. A perfect score in alibi. Well, really, Miss... Never mind. Good day. Oh, Valentine. Gillespie phoned down here while we were out. Good. Phone him back so I can pick up Brooksy and take her out for dinner. He wants to get in touch with you. Right away. Me? Must have liked your frank baby blue eyes. Exactly what did he say? Want you to call him at this number. Go on, use his phone. Oh, all right. Wonder what's on his mind. Search me. Hello? Oh, this is Valentine, Gillespie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. What did you want me to call you about? Come on over right away. There's something I have to tell you. I was afraid and ashamed, but I'm not anymore. I'm not. Well, sure, but can't you... Uh... There are some things that even a no-good failure like me can't take. Things like dishonor. I was in the Pacific for three years. Did you know that? Did you? I'll be over as soon as I can. Well, come on, before my courage gives out. Door's open. Wide open. Funny. He isn't here. Maybe his courage left him again. Uh, what was the name of that barn? Hey, no, wait, wait. What? That sound in the bedroom. Sounds like the window shade or a blind banging against the wall. Come on. Holy mackerel. Poor guy. Couldn't wait. Hello, Hennessy. This is Johnson. Send a crew down to 418 Harrow Street. Gillespie just hung himself. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. I'm sure that you're all aware of the fact that nothing is as tough on a motor as stop-and-go driving... And yet, taxi cabs must operate under these difficult conditions at all times. So, when the manager of a taxi fleet writes that heavy-duty RPM motor oil has doubled the time between overhauls, that's real evidence that heavy-duty RPM can do the same for your car. It took months and months testing hundreds of oils before we were able to develop this new motor oil. Laboratory tests, road tests, even atomic energy was used. Atomically treated piston rings in test cars enabled us to measure engine wear as it took place. The result of all this testing was heavy-duty RPM motor oil that, compared to premium-type oils, as designated by the American Petroleum Institute, doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. And now, motorists throughout the West have found the advantages of using heavy-duty RPM. Case history after case history proves that here is the motor oil that's years ahead of its time. A car fleet, a cab company, people like you and me, report that heavy-duty RPM gives top protection to engines under all driving conditions. So buy what's best for your car. Get heavy-duty RPM motor oil at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Help clear a meek little toy maker, Simon Palchek, from a framed hit and run murder of a young woman. The three men who could be suspects for her death, her ne'er do well husband, her employer, and the head of Thornton Toys, near whose plant the murder took place, all have perfect alibis. 
So you seem to be at a dead end when suddenly the husband calls you up and tells you that there's something he must get off his chest. But even if your name is George Valentine, you'll never find out what that is. Because by the time you get there, the husband is dead. A suicide. Note still in the typewriter just as he left it. Yeah. Uh-huh. To whom it may concern. I thought I could stand up to it, but I know now that I can't. Laura was no good. Or I should say she was no better than I deserved. She was faithless, and I could not accept that. I killed her. And I framed the funny little man who works in the toy plant. Sorry, but this is the only fitting way to end a life which has been nothing but a comedy of errors. Boys will be here pretty soon. Go through the formalities. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll just... What's the matter? I can't quite make the two things fit. Huh? The words Gillespie used when he called me, it, it seemed so important for him to tell me he was a soldier, a good soldier who served in the Pacific. Man likes to hold on to whatever he thinks has been worthwhile in his life. Well, the words he used and the fear of facing us. I've I... seen too many suicides to try and figure out why they would do anything. Hey, wait, Johnson. What are you doing? Look. The fibers on the rope. What are you talking about? They're pointing up toward the ceiling. Hey, that's right. Yeah. He was killed, and then his body was hauled up. That's the only explanation. Murder. Another murder. As vicious as the first. Which leads us exactly nowhere. Especially since we know that all the three alibis are foolproof. We'll have to go back and talk to Lasowski and Thornton. They're our only possibilities. Yeah, I guess so. But why kill Gillespie? What did he know? You try and guess. Oh, come on. Okay. But may I make a suggestion? Yeah. Let's keep up the myth that this was suicide. It's always easier to make a slip if you feel you're safe. Poor man. Poor, poor man. Yeah, I guess that washes up the case, all right. Tragedy. Wonder who the man was that Mrs. Gillespie was seeing. Oh, uh, I wouldn't know. Uh, honestly, I wouldn't. Okay, Mr. Lasowski, relax. Did you find anything, Brooksy? But, uh, there is nothing in Mrs. Gillespie's desk that uh, can help anyone in that respect. I am sure, Mr. Valentine. We were just looking around. I hope you don't mind. Mind? No, no, no. I, why should I? They're all the usual things, George. Pencils, some tissues, a few letters to be filed. So I see, Brooksy. Mr. Lasowski, just as a matter of curiosity, I'd like to check up on your whereabouts since I spoke to you last. Well, that is something I am becoming used to, but I am perfectly willing to cooperate, of course. George. Mm, what is it, Angel? This book. It's one of those files. Folders, plain cover. Oh, let me see. Oh, that's funny. What is? I can use a laugh. This book is written in some foreign language. It belonged to you, Mr. Losowski? Me? No. That is strange. Yeah. Pictures of soldiers, battles. What does it say? It isn't Polish. Polish? Laura was an American, wasn't she? Yes, yes. That is what I cannot understand. Published in Europe. Pretty good pictures. Diagrams to show just how troops should be set up in different military maneuvers. What connection is there between the two murders and the books you couldn't even read? That's a big question, Johnson. I'll see you later. Yeah. Where are you going? War maneuvers. This way, Mr. Valentine. Oh, wait. I'll, I'll put on the light. Uh, Polchak works over in that part of the plant. Of course, during the day, there may be 50 or 60 people working here. Uh-huh. And in the fall, when we get ready for the Christmas rush, we have more than 100. But, uh, Polchak is the one who's responsible for the making of toy soldiers, isn't he? Mm, that's right, that's right. Oh, he's a craftsman, Mr. Valentine. Designs the most beautiful toy soldiers. Cast them, paints their bright uniforms. Excellent. <laughs> there are sure enough of them here. <laughs> yes, all ranks, all kinds. Foreign soldiers, grenadiers... Cavalrymen. The soldiers that are exported, how are they usually packed, Mr. Thornton? Oh, um, say, gross to the box and in an assortment. Ah, I see. Oh, here. Here's a box already packed. Yeah, you see? Oh, yeah, yeah. All pretty well mixed up. <laughs> soldiers pointing a bayonet. Here's one raising his arm to call charge. Another one reaching for a sword. Just a big mad jumble. Huh? What? Oh, well, of course, they're not works of art, you know, just toy soldiers. No offense, Mr. Thornton. Oh, wonderful toys, little lead soldiers. <laughs> I remember I used to play with them. Children don't play with them as much as they used to. I wonder why. 
<laughs> Here's one raising a trumpet to his lips. Uh -huh. Of course, most of them are plain, ordinary foot soldiers, all alike. I was very glad when these orders came a couple of years ago. Pretty steady orders. Oh, that's fine. Well, I guess you'll be wanting to close up and go home now, Mr. Thornton. Yes, uh, yes, indeed. Uh, but uh, anything else I can do to cooperate? No, no, no thanks. There's somebody else I have to see now. Yes, I feel much better, Mr. Valentine, and thank you. Thank you so for everything. I did very little, Mr. Palchuk. Um, that young woman, that unfortunate young woman, the police found out yet who killed her? They're working on it. They usually do a good job. A shame, terrible shame. Yeah. Mr. Palchuk, when did you notice that the book was stolen? What? The book? The one in Polish, the one about soldiers and battle maneuvers, troop oh. formations? Oh, for a nice soldati, yes, of course. How did you know? I didn't, for sure. <laughs> I had it for a long time. You can't buy it in this country, you know. And I kept it out of the plant. Oh, I copied many uniforms from it for uh, foreign soldiers. When was it stolen, Mr. Palchuk? Uh, well, a few months ago, I found out it was gone. Well, why do you say stolen? I thought just someone threw it out. A cleaning woman, maybe. No. No, I think it was stolen. And for a very good reason. But stolen by whom? Why? I have an idea. I'm not sure. Mr. Palchak, do you feel strong enough to come down to the plant with me? But no, it's closed. You have a key, haven't you? I understand you've often worked late, and you're one of the oldest well, employees. Yes, Believe of course. me, it's important. It's sort of setting a trap for someone. What do you say? Well, of course, Mr. Valentine. I will just get dressed. These mama dolls sure are cute. How much longer are we going to wait, Mr. Valentine? Oh, not much. Who are we waiting for? That I don't really know. But now you know how I make the little lead soldiers. Yeah, yeah. Molten lead. <laughs> bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. No, 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 no. I wouldn't come too near, Mr. Valentine. And little forms to cast the soldiers from it. Yes, that's right. I, uh... I thought this box of soldiers was all ready for export. You, what, what? Well, any reason why you melted down some of the soldiers from it? Oh, you must be mistaken. All the plain foot soldiers are here, it seems. But the, uh, the ones with the drawn bayonet and the trumpet and the arms raised to signal charge, where are they? Oh, yeah, they, they were not quite perfect, some of them. And, uh, while I was melting some lead down, anyway, I can make them better. You know, I was wondering all along, uh, how come that lead soldiers are shipped to Europe from here? You know, usually they should be imported here from other countries, say, uh, Japan or Czechoslovakia, where the labor is cheaper. I would not know about that, Mr. Valentin. Mr. Thornton makes the deals with Mr. Lazowski. I just make the soldiers. Yeah, I know. Well, I think we are waiting for nothing. So the late I'm... Mr. Gillespie, Mr. Lazowski, Mr. Thornton, they all had perfect alibis for the time that Mrs. Gillespie was killed. How about you, Mr. Palchek? Me? I, I was in the car. The murderer tried to frame me. And no one and would was... suspect a frame man. What? You're a very smart man, Mr. Palchek. You killed Laura Gillespie and then framed yourself on a hit-and-run charge that you knew very well wouldn't stand I up. I would stand just where you are, Mr. Valentine. Oh, you're really smart, Buster. Completely equipped with a gun. Which I can use. You know, I suspected you, Palchek, ever since I found that book. But I knew you were smart enough so that you'd have to tip your hand yourself. That's why I got you down here. That's why I watched you melt down those particular soldiers. I will take you out in my car and kill you, Mr. Valentine, and then I shall disappear. I have friends, many friends. They will see I get out of this country. I know. And you get lost somewhere behind the iron curtain. Don't, don't, don't move. <laughs> yes, of course, I killed the Gillespies. First the woman and then him. He began to think of, of honor. Mrs. Gillespie was blackmailing you, wasn't she? Oh, that fool. She was smart, too. She realized that the little lead soldiers were semaphoring. The position of the arms standing for letters of the alphabet. Signaling just like sailors do from ship to ship. She should not have meddled. I warned her. Then she found the book and saw how the gimmick really worked. The people you send the jumbled box of soldiers to have the book also. They know the diagram you mean. Sort the soldiers out so they correspond to the diagram and then read the message clear as a bell. Now start moving. Now march. What? Just a doll. Don't you start moving, Buster. Hey. 
Unless you might go to the lead shower. Look out! Here you get. One one chance is all you get. A little war maneuver I learned in the army, playing with real soldiers. What's it like behind the wheel of your car? Do you feel the surge of power under your foot? Do you sail along smoothly and effortlessly? Or has a one-feature gasoline got your car coughing and sputtering and hugging the side of the road? Remember, the feel behind the wheel depends a lot on what's in the tank. So if your driving pleasure isn't all it should be, shift over now to Chevron Supreme, the gasoline that gives you all eight high-performance qualities. Full power, quick starting, anti-knock, Vapor lock prevention, fast warm up, smooth acceleration, area blending, and economy mileage. Put spring in your driving with a full tank of Chevron Supreme gasoline at standard stations or independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. How many messages were the FBI men able to decipher, George? None, without Palchek's cooperation. But he cooperated, all right. Once he started to sing, he sounded like a full-grown choir. Deadliest sabotage of all. That's what Palchek's friends were planning. Deadliest sabotage? Yeah, Brooksy. He was sending out the names of people in different fields whose death would hurt the United States most. And I guess there'd be other Palchek's to see that the sabotage was carried out, no matter what would happen to them. A war maneuver. Yeah, and a war where no holes are barred. Mr. Thornton and Mr. Lasowski are outside. They're still shaking over the way they've been used as dupes by Palchik. I'd better go out and talk to them. Hey, what's it? The mama doll. Present from Mr. Thornton. Uh Uh-huh. You know. Thornton toys for good girls and boys. He seems to have an idea we might find some use for it someday. Okay. Okay. You see, darling, there are war maneuvers and war maneuvers. All's fair in love and war. Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Kenneth Webb. Ken Christie was heard as Lieutenant Johnson, Larry Dobkin as Palchek, Jonathan Hole as Jerry, Ted DeCorsia as Lasovsky, and Bill Boucher as Thornton. The music was composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Last year, more than 70,000 Americans were cured of cancer. Each year, this number will increase. But we must take much greater strides against this terrible disease. It still strikes one in five. Strike back. Join the cancer crusade of the American Cancer Society. Give generously. Mail your contribution today to Cancer, Care of Postmaster. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System.